So in this video, we're going to be talking about stimulated emission. Uh, stimulated emission. And this is the process by which uh, lasers operate. So uh, briefly, what is stimulated emission? So we know that we've been dealing a lot with this two-level energy system. And we've been assuming that our electron was initially in state one. So our electron initially had energy one. And then we sent in uh, a certain electric field with a certain frequency and that electron absorbed a photon and transitioned to state two uh, with some probability and if we had a bunch of electrons in there then they transitioned with some rate uh, let's call that w and we actually calculated this uh, we said that this was just equal to qe naught over 2h bar times this uh, what we called a matrix element which is just a way of saying we're not going to deal with it right now uh, omega L and so this is uh, this frequency of light is just omega L and this difference in energy uh, is Delta E and Delta E is just H bar Delta Omega in this equation here and so we figured out the transition rate uh, of electrons when they're in state one and they're going to state two but what if we had assumed that initially our electron wasn't in state one, uh, it was actually in state two. And this is perfectly reasonable, right? We're probably gonna have a bunch of electrons uh, in, for example, our conduction band, which uh, we can think of as analogous to E2. Um, what if we applied an electric field then? What would happen? Uh, and the answer is if you swap, uh, so if you do all the same math that we did before, uh, you swap C1 and C2, you'll get the same exact answer. Now there's a slight subtlety because this will be its complex conjugate, uh, but when you take the magnitude, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the same exact thing. And so we actually get transitions from state two to state one in response to an applied uh, electromagnetic field. And their magnitude is exactly the same. So the, uh, their magnitude is exactly the same as we had when we had an electron in state one. And in this process, so this electron is transitioning from state two to state one, it actually emits another photon. So it emits another photon of the same exact uh, frequency. Or I guess here I should say uh, the frequency that it emits is delta omega, uh, not omega L. But how, however, because of the delta function here, unless delta omega is equal to omega L, we don't get this, uh, this emitted photon. So we actually have delta omega is equal to omega L. And the photon, the outgoing photon that's emitted is the same exact frequency as the incoming photon. And it's also what's called phase locked or mode locked um, to the incoming photon. So it's actually not only got the same frequency but it's got the same phase or a phase that is uh, locked in some way to our initial photon and so a natural question might be well when do I have stimulated emission and when do I have absorption um, and the answer is entirely dependent on where your electrons start out so if you initially had a bunch of electrons in state one <clears throat> And I'm being a little loose here, right? Because we can't have a bunch of electrons in state one. Uh, really, we have to have a bunch of electrons uh, that have very similar energies, but not exactly the same. Uh, but let's just assume for now that we've got a bunch of electrons with this essentially the same energy. Um, then when we send in an incoming electromagnetic wave, then we get a bunch of absorption. Uh, because we've got a bunch of electrons here in state one, which are just ready to be absorbed. Uh, and so in this case, we get absorption. But if instead uh, we had a bunch of electrons in state two or a bunch of electrons with energy very close to E2, and we send in an electromagnetic wave with a certain frequency and a certain uh, electric field, then we get a bunch of stimulated emission and if we wanted to calculate the rate for either one of these processes we we can just use w um we or we can do, just use this expression that we calculated before and so instead of the absorption of a photon we'll actually get additional photons uh being 
generated or being stimulated. Uh, so being stimulated. And so in this case, we'll get stimulated emission. And in general, uh, we have both of these going on at the same time. So in general, we've when we've got some energy state E2, or some energy E2 with, uh, with a corresponding state and some energy E1, really we've got some electrons occupying energies close to this and some electrons occupying energies close to E1. And the number of electrons that we have here, maybe, I don't know, we've got five electrons, for example, here, and four electrons here. Um, now when we send in an electromagnetic field, since we have more photo or more electrons in state one than state two, uh, we're going to have net absorption. So we're going to have uh, net absorption because the magnitude of these two processes is exactly the same. So the rate uh, per unit time. If we have more electrons in state one versus state two, we're going to get net absorption. If we have more electrons in state two than state one we're going to get net stimulated emission. So in that case, we get net stimulated emission. And a natural question might be, well, what if we've got exactly the same number of electrons at these two energies? So maybe we've got five electrons up here and five electrons down here. And uh, the answer is that if we have the same exact number of electrons and we apply an electromagnetic field, then some of our electrons make the transition uh, from state two to state one, but some also get absorbed. And so overall, our net absorption coefficient is actually gonna be zero. We're not going to get any net absorption or net stimulated emission. It all depends on the number of carriers or the number of electrons in this case that we have in state one and state two. And this is what's called transparency uh, or the, the transparency condition. When you've got the same exact number of electrons being, or the same exact number of photons being absorbed as being stimulated uh, and emitted. So it looks like overall, we've got no absorbed photons. So if we were passing some electromagnetic field through a block of this material, we'd get an electromagnetic field at the output with the same exact amplitude. So if this was E0, uh, then it's E0 when it comes out because the net absorption is zero. And in future videos, we'll actually calculate this overall absorption coefficient. So how much of the light uh, is, um, how much of the light is absorbed versus how much is stimulated. And depending on the number of carriers that we have in state two versus state one, alpha can be positive, and this is when we have more, uh, more electrons in state one, or it can be negative. And this is called having gain or optical gain of a material. And so we'll go over uh, how to find alpha and when it's going to be positive versus negative. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.